All right, rates of change. So I'm going to read the problem first. The traffic flow is defined as the rate at which cars pass through an intersection, and it's measured in cars per minute. All right, the traffic flow at a particular intersection is modeled by this function f. So at a certain intersection, this is the traffic flow between 0 and 30 minutes. And this is, again, a rate in cars per minute. So I like to just tell myself over and over again, this is specifically the traffic flow. And then this is a rate. This is a rate, which means that it is some sort of derivative function already. Okay. So f is measured in cars per minute, got that. And t is measured in minutes. Yes, so we know this. Um, a, to the nearest whole number, how many cars pass through the intersection over the 30 minute period. So we want the total number of cars that go through that intersection over that 30 minutes from zero to 30. All right, if we want the total number of something using a rate, what we can do, because that rate is already a derivative, I wanna go backwards to find my total. So you know when you take the antiderivative of some sort of curve, you get the area underneath, so you get all the y values added up. It's the same idea. I want all the cars added up, basically. Okay, so part A is going to be the number of cars. So from 0 to 30 minutes, I'm not going to write that whole function over again. I'm just going to write f of t. I do have to put the function into my calculator, but that's okay. And then that's one part of my answer. I put it all in my calculator and I get that many cars. I make sure to label my answer, okay? Um, you will see in the next parts, it says indicate units of measure. Uh, I think it has it twice. So all the units will give you that final point. So on the AP test. So you definitely want all the correct units. Okay, B, I, oh sorry, B. Is the traffic flow increasing or decreasing at t equals 7? Give a reason for your answer. So this is like having to give multiple parts for your answer. You can't just say increasing because, and you can't say decreasing because, and then you can't just have part of it, okay? So for B, I'm going to start with at t equals 7. How do I know if flow is increasing or decreasing? Well, how do I know if something, if y, let's say, is increasing or decreasing? I'm looking at the slope. So is the slope positive or is the slope negative? So what I can do is I can find the derivative and see if it's positive or if it's negative, because that tells me about the slope. The derivative is the slope. So I find the derivative of f, and when I plug that into my calculator, I use like math 8, and just plug it right in. I get a negative number. So at t equals 7, the derivative of f, I can't just say the derivative. I have to say f prime of t equals, and I say what it is. Therefore, the traffic flow is decreasing. So that's a negative slope. So the traffic flow is decreasing. So all of that for your answer for b. OK, c. What is the average value of the traffic flow? So you want average value, and then this is the traffic flow. So you want average value equals, here's my formula for average value. And I want average value from 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, so 10 to 15 minutes, 1 over 15 minus 10, and then there you go. So that whole thing, oops, there we go. That whole thing is going to be your two points, and then the final answer that you put into your calculator and you label is going to be one point. So this is going to be one point, and then again, this with all the other units correct is another point. Okay, the last part of the question, D. What is the average rate of change? Okay, that's different. The average rate of change is some sort of slope. So the average rate of change of the traffic flow. This means slope of f of t over the time interval 10 to 15. So average value of f of t versus average rate of change, which is slope of f of t. 
Okay, how do you find slope? Right here, I wrote average rate of change of the traffic flow would be slope of f of t. Slope is literally f of b minus f of a all over b minus a. So that's what I did. f of 15 minus f of 10 all over 15 minus 10. I plug those into the calculator. Like I have to actually plug 15 in to f of t. F of t and then I have to subtract and plug 10 in to f of t and divide by 5 and I get 1.5. So that's 1.5. This is a slope of a rate. So if I have a slope of a slope in minutes, so before it was cars per minute, now it's cars per minute per minute. So that's why it's cars per minute squared. Okay, so there you go for rates of change. Good luck, good luck.